Hi, it's Richard Gowden here. In the current situation in May 2020, there's been a bit more time to watch nature. We're lucky enough to have Welsh poppies, Mechanopsis cambric, in our garden. And I've found it fascinating to watch and listen to the bees that appear totally mad for the nectar these flowers produce, as you can see here. I've also been reading a 2019 paper, number 22, from the Authors' Ecology Letter Group, published by CNRS and John Wiley and Sons, entitled Flowers Respond to Pollinator Sound Within Minutes by Increasing Nectar Sugar Concentration. It asks the question, can plants sense natural airborne sound and respond to it rapidly? The research team carried out tests and found that their test flowers Anathera drummondii, beach evening primrose, did indeed respond to flying bee sounds by producing more nectar within three minutes. The cup-shaped flowers perform particularly well at receiving the flying bee vibrations, which may explain why this Welsh poppy is so attractive. I've also observed, and you can see and hear it here, that the bumblebee, Bombus, produces two sorts of vibration, one when flying, the buzzing sound, and one, a drilling sound, when probing deep into the flower and amongst its stamens. Perhaps both sounds stimulate the flower to produce nectar, thereby encouraging insects to enter and re-enter the flower, as can be seen here, and carry away its pollen to both pollinate other flowers and for food for the bee colony. One other point of interest I discovered in Wikipedia is that most bees collect just pollen or just nectar on any trip, but a few carry both at the same time. The pollen is stuffed into hairy receptacles on their hind legs, called corpiculi. A single bee can carry about half her own body weight in pollen. Once back at the hive, the workers stuff the pollen into an awaiting cell, ready to feed the larvae and other members of the colony. I hope that you find the rest of this simple clip relaxing and interesting. <laughs>